round one. Fight. What's going on, you guys? So I wanted to do a video on Slytherin's upcoming game, Field of Glory Empires. Now, if you guys are not familiar with this game, this is Slytherin's Rome game for 2019. Uh, it's kind of the competitor to Paradox's Imperator Rome. So we we have two huge Rome games coming out in 2019, and you know they're both going to go head to head, and it's going to be really interesting to see uh, the pros and cons between both. And yeah, it's going to be really stellar year uh, for guys that are for you guys that are love Rome, and this is going to be an epic year for this. Uh, now they both have pros and cons, uh, so I'm going to actually dive into this dev diary, and at the end I'm going to kind of like just cover some of the basics of both games. So. Let's dive into it. In empires, you are building your nation so that it endures the passage of time, and your achievement is measured through the legacy you'll leave. Even in the end, your nation is no more. There are several ways to achieve this goal of being first in legacy. It's not just something to be only achieved by conquering part of the map, although that approach remains a possibility, rest assured. If you take a military approach, then you want to plan your campaign so that you conquer and hold your objective regions. These regions are set for each nation and represent loosely the historical progress of or areas of interest. Some nations will have objectives concretic around their capital, so they will expand outward in each direction. Other nations have several possible tracks to follow, and when they get an objective in one of the tracks, then they are provided with another. For example, Rome has a track that represents its progress against Carthage, including Spain and Africa. Another track will let the Republic fight Epirus, Macedon, and then go to Asia Minor, Asia Minor and so on. Another possible approach to gaining legacy is to make your region very cultured, so that they produce legacy points by themselves. There are two levels here, and both demand substantial in investment in the right buildings and decisions, with the second level being quite a challenge to achieve. But if you devote your nation to cr creation of prestigious buildings, it's a possibility. So, first screenshot here. <laughs> So you got a nice, uh, some nation can get legacy points through special features. For example, Ptolemy can have a bonus if he controls a large fleet. Nice. Okay. Yet another option to pursue actively those national decisions that provide legacy points. These can include domestic reforms or mounting a faraway expedition into the border of the unknown world. A final way to generate legacy is to try and endure the difficulty of managing a nation past its glory, like Sparta perhaps. That clung to life for centuries well beyond its climax. This has no doubt left the lasting impressions of future generations, as few people know nothing about Sparta even nowadays. This is Sparta! Come on, 300? <laughs> You know, that, that was one of the kind of reasons I knew about Sparta after watching that movie. <laughs> Practically speaking, when your government is old or decadent, each turn you manage to survive the vicissitudes happening to your nation, then a significant amount of legacy points will be given. I'm probably massacring some of these words, so just <laughs> give you a heads up. Uh, so, another one, screenshot. Syracuse is an objective for Carthage. Once it is conquered, the next one will probably be in the boot of Italy. Cool. If you can build and sustain... A substantial legacy lead, it is possible to win the game before its actual end date of 190 common error. This might reward a high risk strategy when you try to gain legacy quickly and accept the inevitable problems such as focus will bring. A modern equivalent of a traditional Spartan instruction to return with your shield or on it. Come back with your shield or on it. Equal possessing substantial amounts of legacy will help you during the game as there are a number of rewards to be seen as an impressive state by, by your contemporaries. All right, screenshot number three. The heart of this includes empires made of several regions that are quite cultured, but they generate also some decadence. Gotta admit, these maps look really good. Let's just go back here. Really nice, really nice texture work. All right. So the game is much more about painting the map in your color. Even if in the end all nations are trying to generate more legacy than their rivals, you can still get these points from different approaches. Although admittedly, it's pro probably better to try a, ba a balanced approach perhaps with a focus on one. So last screenshot, I think, yep. So you got legacy from government plus six points. Cool, nice. So I wanted to kind of just go over this grand strategy game that they have set up for the Roman error. Now, this game is a little different than its, I would say, competition, which is Imperator Rome. 
This game has a strategic element to the game, which we just saw the screenshots, but it also has a tactical component. This, which they had a Field of Glory game that came in, in I believe it was 2018, with a really good tactical combat system. And I really did enjoy it. It's a really cool combat system. And they are incorporating this combat system into this strategic game. So they're going to work hand in hand, which is really awesome. Now, uh, Imperial Rome doesn't have a tactical portion. It has a killer strategic portion. And we see that through the uh, live streams that Paradox is doing and... Uh, it's it really is cool and I, I you know there's a lot of features that are putting into the paradox engine that are very very revolutionary but I find this game very alluring because you know when you move an army into a province you know the you just you don't have to worry about the game calculating okay well this unit has this many points and this unit has this many points and do a probability and your side loses and the enemy wins and you're like okay well kind of thing, you know, kind of like, all right, well, I guess I'll try better next time. In this game, the army that brings to the field, you can try some enhanced tactical strategies. So if you might be outnumbered, you might, you know, might be able to use the terrain to use the terrain to your advantage, kind of like a 300 kind of, you know, action uh, where you can, you know, kind of bottleneck a larger army into a small crevice and then, you know, their numbers will be irrele irrelevant. <laughs> So, yeah, that, that's something that is going to add a lot more depth uh, with Field of Glory's Empire because there's numerous times where I love going into battle with, you know, maybe half or three quarters of the enemy force and trying to see if I can, you know, basically outmaneuver and basically outgeneral them. And sometimes I win, sometimes I lose, but I love the thrill of that and the satisfaction that you gain when you win. So that's pretty awesome. Um, so either way, I'm looking forward to both these games. Uh, the Paradoxes game is really amazing with uh, the sh live streams. I saw the dev diaries that they're coming out with the new features. And this game by itself is revolutionary in its own aspect because besides having a really awesome strategic level, it's having a killer tactical uh, component to it, which, yeah, it's going to be really, really interesting how these uh, games go uh, head to head when they both come out this year. So really looking forward to it. And oh, and it's made by one of my favorite developers, Ajod. So yeah, that's another a plus. <laughs> All right, guys, I hope you guys enjoy this. I will catch you guys in the next one. See you then.